thank you a lot for the organizers, for the tango people, Reynal especially for inviting me. Um, so uh, first thing, I, I want to apologize in advance because this will probably be a, be a very chaotic uh, presentation. I haven't practiced it a lot uh, uh, at all, I mean. Um, and I just um, focused on creating a document that could be used later on. So probably you can just uh, go now and, and simply read the document and, and you will get more or less the same, <laughs> the, the, the same information. Uh, anyway, um, as you probably all know, um, uh, the, um, just this is just to give some context. Um, I have been uh, maintaining the Taurus project and some other related projects uh, within the Tango community for quite long, for more than than ten years. Um, and in, but I am living now. Uh, this is my last week working at Alba, so. Basically, what I wanted with this uh, webinar is to, to try to give other people who may uh, take the, the role of, of maintaining this, these projects, uh, co-maintaining, of course, uh, because when, when I said I have been maintainer, it's just I've been probably the coordinator, but this is a community effort, okay? But anyway, this uh, coordination role needs to be filled by someone. So I just hope that mm, with this webinar, I give more or less uh, some tips that can be useful for, for the person or persons who, who take this role, okay? Um, as I said, this is probably be going to be quite chaotic. Uh, don't, don't hesitate to interrupt. Uh, uh, I, I will just be reading this document, which you can find in the in the um, Taurus Wiki. Uh, so if you go to the Taurus project, uh, to the Taurus documentation in the project page, you can go to the Wiki, and there you have the. Um, you have a link to, to this um, webinar. Also, we are recording the webinar, so eventually there will be also a link for the video. Um, more, I intend to I intend to stop uh, for a break uh, around eleven thirty, more or less. If I forget, uh, just just stop me, okay? Um, what else? Well, I think we can we can start. Um, as I said, I will be going through this document. Um, so first first thing, since this is focused on on potential maintainers, I, I will start by giving more the information about the project and not about the code. Uh, I think that is the most important part that needs to be uh, transferred to, to some other people. Uh, so first thing to know is that Taurus is uh, organized in a, um, in a group called Taurus Org. So we can see it here. This is the, the Taurus Org group in GitLab. Uh, of course, there is also the um, the Taurus documentation page. Uh, here are the, um, the projects related to Taurus and Taurus being the, the main one. Uh, after this, probably Taurus PyQt graph is, is the next in, in importance in terms of maintenance. And also Taurus Docker is probably uh, another uh, one that needs uh, special attention. Okay, um, as I was saying, there, there is the main Taurus project and then there are uh, plugin projects like Taurus PyQt Graph, uh, Taurus Tango Archiving, uh, Schemes and so on. 
Then there are also projects like the Taurus Docker, uh, which also need maintenance. Uh, this is the project in which we build the Docker images that we use for testing mainly, and some others like, like this one. Um, then uh, there are also some projects that are related to Taurus, but which are not in the, in the Taurus, sorry. Uh, just a second. Wait, I'm sorry, I don't find the, the links. I'm, I'm not the expert in Taurus, I must say. I, okay. I follow you. I You start at something with a, with a link, which I am... Okay, if, yeah. best, best thing, if you just go to the main Taurus um, page. What okay. Is what is the name of the main Taurus page? It's this one. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I am showing. I, I will. I will copy. It. Yeah, I'll copy it in the chat. Okay. So from here you can access everything. Like the project page is the GitLab page. Then this this is just the code. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, uh, where I was, yes, I was mentioning that there are also other uh, related projects um, that are not within the Taurus organization group. Um, these are, for example, Sardana and the, um, the SVG Synoptics from Max4. Uh, I will talk about this later. So um, regarding the, source, the sources of documentation, the main source is the official documentation, which is this one. Uh, apart from accessing the, the rest of the stuff, well, here you can get the documentation for the latest, um, for the latest release. Uh, in there, you can also access the Taurus enhancement proposals which normally describe the new features in, in detail. Uh, you also have a, a link for the full API of Taurus uh, with all the, all the information about uh, every, sorry. So let's say for example, Taurus QT, QT core or whatever and Let's say, yeah. So here, here you have all the all the information that that is on, on the API. Um, yes, as I was saying, there are the official docs, which are the the main point of entry. Then within the Taurus org project. Uh, or the Taurus org, um, also the group. You can you can access the issues. If you if you go via the Taurus organization uh, group, uh, all the issues of all the projects uh, are in the same place. Otherwise, if you just go to one of the projects, you can you can also access the issue list for this project. As you see here, and the merge merge requests as well. So, but if you go as we were uh, as we were before on the Taurus organization group, and you go to issues, for example, you will see not only the issues in the Taurus org Taurus project, but also, for example, in Taurus org PyQt graph. Okay. So this is the, the central the central point. Okay. Uh, then uh, there is the Taurus Wiki, uh, which you can access it from the Taurus project. This is the wiki, and here is a place for collecting basically for collecting related documentation, like for example contributed documents. And, and the slides like here, 
uh, also put links to related projects, etc. For example, as I mentioned before, this webinar will be linked here. Okay. And from the Taurus Wiki, I wanted to highlight this document, which may complement pretty much what I am talking during this, uh, during this webinar. This is more developer oriented, more than maintainer oriented, but uh, it is interesting to, to have a look. And I also wanted to highlight uh, this tutorial, which is also linked from, from, the, from the wiki somewhere, or it should. It is, yes, here. So I wanted to highlight this one because I think it's a really nice um, introduction for uh, developers. Uh, well, actually this might be an older link. Let me use the one that I put here. Uh, here, yes. So this is a nice uh, introduction for new developers. Uh, even new to Python and, and Qt. Uh, it was done by Arturo Hofstad uh, from the European Southern Observatory. And as I said, it, it goes uh, on, on a nice introduction on Python, Qt, and then Taurus. Uh, the only thing is that for the Tango community, uh, it is not using Tango, it's using its own uh, the, their own uh, control system, but still it is a very good uh, introduction for, for developers, even, even if you are in the Tango community. Okay, next, um, let's talk about the communication and contribution channels to Taurus. There are two mailing lists, but as I say here, they are semi-abandoned now. Uh, we've used them very seldom and mostly we, we communicate via, via GitLab uh, nowadays. Still, I think it is good to have at least one uh, mailing list for, for announcements because not, most, most people won't be subscribed to, to, all, the, to all the issues in, in, in GitLab. And even if you are subscribed, you are probably not reading them uh, because the, the volume is too high. So I, I just propose to, to keep at least one of, of the two, but probably the two of them are now obsolete. Um, by the way, just as a convention, I try to um, mark my suggestions for the future uh, like this in, in this document, okay? So as I said, there are these two mailing lists, but most of the communication is now done on GitLab issues. It was done on, on GitHub issues before we moved to GitLab. Uh, and, and now we use them for communicating mostly. Also, we use the um, uh, mentions in, in GitLab, basically using the ad symbol uh, to, to mention someone like you would do in Twitter or any other uh, social, um, social network. Okay, uh, one thing that I do as a maintainer, uh, I have been doing as a maintainer is taking, being subscribed to, the, to all the issues and merge requests in, in, the, in the Taurus projects. And also um, label, the new questions or the, the new tickets, label them as, easy, as, as soon as possible as questions, bugs, or enhancements. This helps a lot to, to maintain uh, and for future, for, for doing releases and, and everything. So you can see, for example, in the issues, uh, if, we, if we look at the issue list here, Yes, as you see, everything that I have read uh, should have a, a, a label marking it. This way is also a, a way of communicating that someone has already 
looked at the issue. Uh, if, if there is a new issue with no uh, label for question or enhancement or, or bug, then it means that it has skipped the, the alert. Um, also a note on, on merge requests. Um, this depends on, on the projects and, and on preferen personal preferences of people. Some people prefer that first an issue is created and then the merge request only, only references to the issue, but all the, all the conversation is done in the, on the issue first. Uh, another, in other projects, it is uh, not uh, mandatory doing that, and you can just directly start a conversation on a merge request. This has been the de facto case for, for Taurus. So as we say, you, you are, if, if you are thinking on contributing something, you are free to create an issue first, uh, but you are also welcome if you directly create the merge request and, and the discussion is done on the, on the merge request. In any case, uh, it is interesting to look at the contributing instructions. The contributing, um, the, the contributing instructions, you can find them uh, in the root of the, of the project directory. So here. And it is worth reading if you are uh, going to contribute. And of course, it's good to keep them in mind when you are the uh, when, when you are maintaining. Uh, as a note, as you may already know, we in the Taurus, in, in all the Taurus projects, we use the for and pool model. That means that you do not need to have um, to be granted permissions in the in the official repositories. Uh, you can just fork the repository and and make a a pull request or a merge request, as is it called in in GitLab. Okay, and one thing that uh, I think that should be done for the future in the community is to encourage more developers to, to be part of the Taurus org uh, group. So just uh, because the Taurus org group is, is the ones who can uh, merge, uh, merge uh, contributions into the into the develop uh, branch of, of Taurus or into the main developing branch of, of the other projects. Uh, so I would suggest that we, that the, the community should uh, encourage uh, more developers to join the, the Taurus or group. And I'm, I'm of course, of taking responsibility on, on merging requests. Um, okay. <clears throat> So now about the infrastructure that we have for, for testing and continuous integration. Sorry, one, one thing, I, I don't know if I said it before, but please interrupt me if, there is, if, if you have any question about what I am saying. I, uh, otherwise you will just be listening to my monotone for, for four hours and, and that is horrible. Okay, uh, so about the infrastructure for testing and continuous integration. Just, uh, yes. Carlos, I have a question for, you know how many members you have today? Because you know that in June, GitLab will make some change that for free projects, you can't have anything more than four or five members. Sorry, uh, can, can you repeat the last part? In GitLab.com in June, they will make some change and you won't be allowed to have more than I think for five members per organization. Okay, good. This um, this is for the free for the free tier. Yes. Okay. So uh, so this relates to this part that I am that, that I wanted to mention uh, about the I, I linked it to the CI minutes that we have in in the shared runners from from GitLab but it probably applies also to this uh, that you have just mentioned, yeah. uh, Benjamin. So if at any point uh, there are um, limitations because of the free tier, uh, we should apply for uh, gold status, just, just like Tango Controls did. 
yes. we we should all we, we would qualify uh, i expect that we would qualify but if we don't qualify then uh, in this case i would say that the only uh, solution is to move to a managed gitlab instance or live with the live, live with the limitations of course in the case of the ci minutes as far as i know uh, now we are limited to 400 but i don't think it is being enforced at this moment um, but again if we have uh, problems we we can apply for gold status or we can provide our own runners for that yes yeah i think applying for gold status probably. yeah it, it, it may it, it may make sense uh, yes. we just haven't done it because we haven't needed it but uh, as, as soon as we need it, I think it should be, uh, if, if they don't change their criteria, we, we meet them uh, without problems. Yeah, thanks. Okay, thank you, Ben. Um, so next thing I, I wanted to mention is, well, as I said, we, we are using GitLab CI for, for the continuous integration, and we are testing, um, we are we are testing on on various different uh, releases. I, I I am going to show you the GitLab CI file. So this is what we have. So there is a build PyPy. Then we build the documentation. We test um, Flake Eight and Black. More on this later. And here are the tests. So this is the matrix of the current tests that we are doing now. We are testing on different Debian, different Debian releases, uh, currently only on PyQt5 because of uh, mm, issues with the versions of PySide 2 in these releases. Um, then we are also testing with Conda, uh, with Python 3.9 and PyQt and PySide, and uh, with Conda with Python 3.6, 3.7, and 3.8, and PyQt as well. Okay, and each of these uh, each of these Taurus tags actually corresponds to an, an image, uh, a, a tag in in our in in our taurus docker uh, image uh, so basically adding a, a, a new uh, environment environment to test uh, let's say for example uh, someone want to test on centos uh, is just providing it's just about providing the um, the image uh, building it probably in taurus docker and and that's it uh adding it to the to the matrix and, and and that should be it the taurus docker project uh which i already briefly mentioned uh is organized like this it has different um different branches for each uh for each tag so each tag is built by a different branch uh well with the exception of conda which is actually building three different three different versions. Uh, it is pretty fair, it's, it's, it's pretty standard, a pretty standard way of creating the images. Uh, the only thing I want to mention is that the, the images get created, some of them, like the Conda ones and the Debian stable ones, they are um, created, uh, I mean, they are updated every week. They are recreated every week uh, in order to keep up with uh, dependencies changing. Um, and when we build them, we test them with the latest Taurus, like this, and, and only make them, only release these images when, when, when it passes, when, when the test passes. Okay, so this was about it. Um, yes, this is what I just said. Some, 
some images are being <clears throat> automatically rebuilt. Uh, right now it is done weekly and we do this uh, with uh, an, a schedule set in, in the Taurus Docker project. You see here, there are these two builds. So if you want more, if you want more frequency, you can do it here. And at the end, the, the images end up in the container registry, which is here. And here you will see both the released uh, images and also all the previous, uh, previously created ones. So if you need to debug something that used to work in, in a previous CI build and is not working anymore because the image has, has been changed, you can always go back uh, to, to previous images. I would say, that probably eventually we would also need to uh, enable cleanup of the of the very old images because um, I don't think we can we will be able to store um, this indefinitely. Okay. Now about the supported versions, Python versions. Right now we are supporting Python as, as you saw in in the in the matrix. We are supporting from Python uh, 3.7 to 3.9, uh, actually 3.6 uh, as well. And, but also those in the Debian releases that we are, um, uh, that, 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 that we are using. So for example, stretch uh, the, the, we are building, we are still maintaining Taurus compatible with stretch and that means Python 3.5 as well. Okay, but ideally, uh, I think we should aim to be at least uh, synchronized with the, with the NumPy, so with the scientific stack uh, supported Python versions. Uh, the scientific stack supported Python versions are defined in this document here. It's recommended Python and NumPy version support as a community policy standard. Okay. And in practice, we should always support at least the ones that are supported in, in Conda Forge by, by our um, uh, sorry, by, by our dependencies. Okay, so one thing that is relatively new in Taurus is uh, that since Taurus 5, we are enforcing Flake 8, which is uh, quality linter, and Black, which is uh, also a linter and, um, and, and an automatic editor of or fixer, an automatic fixer of code. Uh, so since Taurus 5, we are enforcing compliance with these two tools. And in order to help with this, we, we are now providing a pre-commit configuration. Uh, you can see more information on, on how to use all this uh, as a user uh, in, this, uh, in this documentation. So, here you have the tips and for example, as a, as a developer, my recommendation is that you install pre-commit. Uh, this is a Python module. And uh, then just um, do pre-commit this, this command here, pre-commit install in the, in the environment where you, where you develop. And in this way, uh, the, um, Flake and black will be automatically enforced on every commit that you do locally. In this way, when you push uh, to the to the project, it will be uh, it, it won't cause any any uh, problem. It won't you, you won't get warnings. As um, for the maintainers of the Taurus project, uh, then this is important, which is keeping the versions of black and flake 8 
that are used for the CI testing should be kept uh, in, in sync with the pre-commit configuration. Okay. Um, in any case, if you don't use the pre-commit, uh, you can still, when, when you, if you look at the GitLab CI um, jobs, you will see that there is, sorry, no, not this one, this one. Uh, in the test, there is this test that tests flake and, and black. If you go to uh, the pipelines in the, con in the continuous integration for Taurus, let's see, for example, yeah, this one, is testing here and it is uh, green, but if we go, probably we, we should find something in which flake, yeah, for example, this one uh, had a problem with flake and black. And if we go here in the, in the output of the, um, of, of the continuous integration job, you can see what is the, the offending line that made this fail. Okay, so you can also have the, the solution. Also, if you don't automatically use pre-commit, you can still use black locally and by just running black on the root of Taurus, uh, black should be fixed, fixed as long as you use the same black version as we use for, for the continuous integration. Okay, so about documentation. Um, in the early times, we used uh, to host the Taurus documentation in, in Read the Docs, but we moved that to uh, actually building the documentation as part of our as, as part of our pipeline. So if we look at one pipeline, a recent pipeline. You can, yeah, you, you can see here that the docs are, are built by us as, as one, um, one project and sorry, as, as one job in the, in the continuous integration chain. So in this way, we, we also test that the docs are uh, okay. And this also means the automatic API documentation. And if, we look, yes, if, if we look, uh, let's say, yes. So yeah, this, this is the, the uh, pipeline down for, um, for a tag. Mm, so when, when we tag, we, we are also releasing. So as you see, we are building the docs here and there is, one uh, one job that deploys this uh, to PyPy and to GitLab pages. Okay, uh, so when you when when we are tagging, we are deploying to the to GitLab pages, and basically we are uh, deploying to this uh, to this page here. Um, but also when we are not uh, when we are not mm, uh, deploying, we are just, for example, doing a merge, a merge request. If we look, for example, at this merge, this merge request, it is quite interesting that we can open the documentation for this code. We we can open it. Uh, let me see where it is. Uh, I don't see it here now, sorry. Uh, I am a bit lost. May, maybe this is an older, it, it comes from an older branch. Let's see one of the merged ones. Um, this definitely should have it. Yeah. Yeah, here. Maybe it was in the other one as well, I, and I missed it, but 
it is here. If if you go to this um, button, basically you will be seeing the documentation that was built for this merge request. Okay, so this in this is interesting, especially for merge merge request merge requests that uh, alter the documentation in some way. You you can have a, a full uh, you can browse how it will look when when this is approved. Okay. Um, then for maintainers, uh, we own the Taurus Scala org uh, domain, and it is now pointed to to the GitLab pages. This is uh, administered by by Alba right now. Um, so if something needs to be done, uh, you should contact Alba to so that the Alba IT people can can update it. Also, there is this. Uh, if if you go to the documentation, you see that you have a link for other versions, and in here, basically, you have instructions on how to access um, uh, docu documentation for other reference. So, let's say, for example, that I want to see the documentation for. Five zero zero one. Uh, I don't know if this was created. No, this was never created. Uh, for zero zero zero. No, again. Yes. So this is for five zero zero zero. Okay. So you also have a. Uh, history of all the or, or many of the released documentations. Okay, one more thing about testing is uh, testing on Windows. Uh, currently, we are not uh, doing CI test on Windows. Uh, GitLab allows it. Uh, there might be restrictions on the minutes or even uh, because of the plan, but. In principle, it is possible to also supply our own uh, runner for doing it. And in my opinion, it should be done. This will do by doing this, we could uh, have a much better coverage uh, on on the spectra of things that we need to to check before releases. So it would be it would be a nice addition to to add continuous integration for for Windows. In the meanwhile, uh, the manual test that tests that we do with with Windows, uh, you you can do them on a normal Windows machine. But we found that it is very convenient to use uh, a Vagrant uh, distribution. Uh, in if you go to the Taurus Vagrant project, which is uh, one of the projects in the Taurus in Taurus org, here you have the um, the information how to um, provision a fresh um, a fresh windows machine <clears throat> that can be used for testing um, and <clears throat> sorry and has already uh, all the taurus dependencies installed including tango uh, this is maintained as i said up as part of one of the one, one of the Taurus or one of the Taurus or projects you can see it here. Okay. So what time is it? Okay. About releases. Um, uh, since 2013, we uh, committed to release Taurus twice a year, Sardana as well. And we we chose June, uh, July, and and January as the months in which we should release. This uh, schedule has been kept sometimes better and sometimes not as good, uh, but more or less we have managed to release twice twice a year. Um, we do this using the GitFlow model right now. Um, 
for those that don't know it, uh, the Git flow model basically uh, is that you develop on feature branches and keep a develop branch that is uh, that gets the merge requests. But when you want to release, what you do is you create a release branch and merge into the master, or in our case, it is called a stable branch. Okay, this is the, the workflow that we use for, for the releases right now. And when we do this, uh, we not only, of course, uh, force that all the automated test, test suite is running, this, this is always the case for, for the developed branch, but also uh, we, we do manual tests. We can see this, for example, in this merge request for um, this. This is a, a merge request for for a release for one of the latest releases. Uh, so when when we decide that it is time to release, what we do is that we create this uh, a merge request, uh, a new branch, uh, a release branch. Then uh, we do a merge request to a stable, to a stable branch, not to develop. And we uh, do tests for a set of uh, chosen architectures. Typically, we choose the ones that the institutes are more interested in, in having checked. And for this, the, the checks that we do here, they are manual, manual tests. And they are, um, let me see, where, where are we? Yeah, we do manual tests that are defined in a document here, which is in the, in the Taurus documentation uh, that explains how to release and has this manual test checklist. So we try to keep this manual test checklist updated. Uh, and basically, as you can see, uh, it is when, when we test uh, for one architecture like this, we create a, an issue and we put the, all, the, all the tests that we have done, we, uh, we report them here and we put the, the output that we are finding. We, uh, we mark if we have found some, some issues. Uh, and then at the end, we just decide if, if all the tests are okay or if some tests have failed, but we consider it is not uh, release critical, then eventually we decide to merge this uh, release. So that means it goes to the stable branch and we tag it and that's it. Uh, and a new release is done. So this, this process is quite, um, quite strict and, and it's really nice to have things thoroughly tested before being released, but it also makes, it also puts a big burden on, on, the, on the maintainers. Uh, it is for this reason that I, I will jump and then jump back. Is for this reason that uh, we are now now opening the discussion on whether we should also allow uh, other type of releases that are not manually tested, but they are using the um, they are using the main the, the develop branch uh, as as it is. Okay, this is de facto how we work. For example, at Alba, and I know that in other institutes. That is the case as well. Uh, that we are not waiting for uh, an official release uh, uh, that takes roughly six months to come. Uh, as soon as we we need something, some new feature or bug fix that is already fixed in the develop branch, we just create a package from from there and and we deploy internally from there. So basically this is a discussion, an open discussion about whether we should uh, do the same for, for, the, um, for the official releases. Uh, I just leave this open and 
and encourage everyone to, to contribute to that discussion. Anyway, uh, when we say that we do a release uh, every, every six months or whatever, um, what is what we do for a release? First, what we do is um, uploading packet, the packages to PyPy. Uh, this is uh, Python wheels, uh, and you can see them in, in PyPy in, in, the, in the de facto uh, standard repository for Python modules. So you can see, for example, uh, Taurus and actually, let's see Taurus PyQt graph. Oh, sorry, no, this one. Uh, so here, if you go to the release history, you can you can see the release history here, and you can see that there are also pre-releases in in PyPy. This is what I mentioned here. Pre-releases are releases that won't get installed automatically when you do pip install uh, Taurus, but that are available if you explicitly ask for that precise version in your pip command. Um, and uh, the PyPy release is done automatically uh, when we push a version tag to the repository. Uh, and then it is just deployed by, by an automatic uh, job in, of course, if, every, if all the tests succeed. Uh, so releasing to, to PyPy is already automated. Then uh, we also release uh, to Conda, more specifically to the Conda Forge uh, channel. And this is done uh, with, um, with a repository which is called a feedstock in Conda Forge. This was uh, done uh, by Benjamin. It's a great job that has uh, saved us a lot of work. Uh, and basically, um, this, uh, this repository um, gets notified uh, when a new version is published in PyPy and then uh, it builds the, co the, the corresponding Conda package. Uh, in, the case of, in the case of Taurus PyQt graph, um, this is done um, automatically. So there is no need of, of any intervention. When, when someone pushes, to, uh, pushes a tag uh, to the, a version tag to the, um, to the Taurus PyQt graph project. Uh, the, the package is uploaded to PyPy, and as soon as Conda, as, as Conda Force realizes of this, it is built and it is pushed. In the, that is the case for Taurus PyQt graph. And it's not yet the case for Taurus, but it can be. This is just a matter of, of taste, if we want to automate it or not. Uh, right now, for Taurus, is not automated. That means that a manual uh, acceptance need to be done after checking that everything regarding dependencies and so on is is properly is properly done. But in any case, it is just a matter of few clicks and everything is automated. Uh, currently, uh, Conda is not built on pre-releases, uh, but in the in the discussion that I mentioned before about uh, automating the releases, uh, this is considered as well as one possibility to also build on, on pre-releases. Then we are also building uh, packages for uh, the official Debian repositories. That means that someone that installs Debian uh, can directly do uh, apt get uh, Python 3 Taurus and will get uh, Python 3 Taurus. Um, but this needs uh, uh, maintenance the, in, in the Debian Forge. Uh, the Debian Forge is called Salsa. Uh, so there are two projects that belong to a, to a group that is called Debian Science Team. And, and the official Debian packages are built uh, well, 
they are first built by by pushing to this repository, pushing tags to this repository. But this only builds the package in the in the forge, and then uh, someone with um, with permissions in in Debian, a Debian developer or maintainer, needs to upload the um, uh, the package that is automatically created to the to the actual Debian repository. So basically, basically a manual action needs to be done where a person responsible in Debian uh, signs the package and, and uploads it. Um, this can be triggered by filling a request for packaging bug in Debian or by contacting the Debian science team. Up to now, uh, Frederic, Frederic Picard has been of the greatest help with this. Uh, and I hope he will still be available for, for helping whoever is uh, taking care of this from now on. Um, then uh, we are also building uh, Debian packages. Well, one, one important thing, sorry, from the official ones, it, that is that when you create a package in Salsa and you upload it, this will only go for the unstable, um, for Debian unstable, uh, but it won't go for, uh, then automatically after some time it will migrate to Debian testing, but it will never get onto the existing stable release uh, or all the stable or something like this. For this, you need to manually backport. Um, instead of doing official backports, which for many reasons uh, are not the best, the best choice in our case. Uh, what we do is that we build uh, our own unofficial uh, Debian backports. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the repository that we use for this, the, the GitLab instance that we use for this is behind the firewall in Alba. Uh, and therefore we cannot uh, share the the repositories. Uh, this is uh, something uh, that clearly needs to be changed. And it is uh, in Alba, we, we, are, we want to do it, uh, but uh, we are still having some, some issues with that. Um, in any case, um, GitLab is currently, uh, it has an alpha feature which allows to um, uh, to create a Debian repository, Debian package repository uh, in, in GitLab. Uh, this is not yet available uh, in gitlab.com, but it will eventually be. And in my opinion, is the best option for, for making this public Debian repository. So it's just keeping an eye on, on, on the release of this feature, uh, and this would be nice. Uh, so as I was saying, in Alba, we build internally for a stretch, buster, and seed, and we will be building also for bullseye and, and testing. Um, in any case, since we, since we do have the packages created uh, and we create them automatically, uh, this can be, if needed by someone in the community, they can be manually uploaded as attachments to GitLab releases. Uh, so that's... Uh, that's uh, something that, that can be done, only that we do it on demand. Okay. Um, and this was, uh, I already uh, talked about it. So uh, now we leave the, um, we leave the part of the testing and go for the explaining a little bit about the Taurus plugins. Um, let me see the time. Okay. So, uh, since some time ago, we um, organized the Taurus code in a way that you can plug in uh, other modules in or objects from other modules in Taurus. Uh, we do this, for example, for the schemes for 
for the sources of, of data. Uh, like, for example, um, we created um, uh, a scheme for, for um, H5, uh, HDF5 um, files to use HDF5 files as a source of attributes of Taurus attributes and so on. And this, this is implemented in a different uh, let me clean this a little bit. Uh, so uh, so if we go to Taurus org, yeah, for example, this uh, this project is a separate project. It's not uh, the the Taurus project, and uh, but when you install this when when you install this module automatically uh, it enables uh, the it adds the support for hdf5 files uh, as a as a source of of taurus attributes okay and this is done by using uh, setup tools uh, um, entry points Okay, I, this is uh, kind of a complex um, thing and I don't want to, to enter into it. But what I do want is to um, show where, where the information is. So there is one Taurus enhancement proposal uh, regarding this that you can see here. Um, as, as you can see here, everything regarding to how, how to implement your plugins is uh, mentioned. And uh, then here is a, an example on how you um, declare, um, how you advertise that, that some, some module, um, some module member uh, can be accessed from, from a given Taurus entry point. And then there is a list, uh, sorry, it's not here. Yeah, uh, it is here. In, in, the, in the main documentation, there is this page, which is also, sorry, it's also linked, uh, it's also linked here. And this is the same page. Um, so in the documentation, you can see in the developer's guide plugins, you can see all the plugins that are currently implemented uh, using this, this API, okay? Uh, so you can see that we have uh, entry points for adding subcommands in the subcommands to the Taurus uh, uh, command line interface uh, command. Uh, then we have um, entry points for adding new new schemes, new Taurus core schemes, uh, for adding new formate, formatters, uh, for adding uh, model choose uh, model chooser selectors. So if you implement a new scheme, you probably also want to implement a model chooser selector and, and register it. Uh, also for plotting for alternatives to Taurus plot and alternatives to Taurus trend, to Taurus image, to Taurus trend 2D, and also for the um, uh, widgets that are used within Taurus forms. I will uh, go in, in detail for this precise one later. Okay, so as I said, I don't want to, I, I don't want to get into much more detail about the plugins, just that you know that uh, that you can add code to Taurus without actually um, without you actually changing the code of the Taurus project, just uh, doing it in an independent in, in an independent project. And I also wanted to uh, leave a link here for um, other possible candidates for. Uh, becoming uh, Taurus, Taurus entry points. 
Uh, sorry, let's go there. As I said, this is a list. Ah, sorry, it was here. Yeah, so this, this is the list uh, I was mentioning. Okay. Okay. So now a little bit of talk about how the Taurus project is, is structured. You probably already know, and you can see it if you come, sorry. Let's see Taurus, the Taurus project. So this is what I just put there is the, the tree that you can get from here, from, from the project. So it's a summary. You see that we have a submodule. Taurus is composed by many submodules. Uh, and many of them are not imported uh, implicitly. So when you import Taurus, you are only importing this, but you are not importing Taurus.core, for example, or Taurus.qt. OK? Um, one thing that I wanted to highlight is that uh, in in the most recent version in Taurus 5, uh, we, we have organized this a, a little better. And we one of the things that we have done is that we have clearly documented how the import should be done. Uh, before this, um, there was no clear uh, way of knowing whether this or this was the right way for uh, importing Taurus form. Uh, by convention and in some, um, in, in some documentation that was probably not uh, um, uh, read, like it was like in, in issues and so on. So not, not, very, not very well documented, in, but it was written that this was not the, the way of importing. Uh, where you add this, but you should import from here. Okay, right now this is properly documented, basically because uh, only you should only import in um, how the as 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 how it is um, documented in in the Taurus API. So this is now the source of truth for. Uh, how you should uh, import uh, stuff. Uh, anything that is not listed here uh, should be considered an internal, uh, an internal interface and should not be used. Of course, if it might happen that there is something that is missing from here but should be here, in that case, this is a bug and you should report it and, and it should uh, be introduced here. This list that I have just shown is automatically created uh, using uh, the all variable in in the in the module in, in in these modules. Okay, so if you want to include something in the official API, basically it has to be listed in an all variable. And conversely, anything that is not in there should not be considered public API, okay? Public interface. Uh, also to help with the import, uh, one addition in the newest documentation is that the classes now uh, give the hint of how it should be imported. Uh, as you see, this is a, a snapshot, but we can see it from here. I don't know, for example, let's say, um, I don't know, uh, Taurus form, for example. If we click on the documentation for Taurus form, you see you have the inheritance diagram here. And at the more or less at the bottom, you have imported from here as this. So this is this, this is the suggested way of importing Taurus form. Okay. Mm, good. Okay. 
And as, as I said, the, the different submodules here, the ones that I think that should be kept in mind by a maintainer are uh, CLI. Um, console is, I think is deprecated, I'm not sure. Um, then core and QT are the main ones. And also the external, which is the one that provides um, um, mixins for for external for external modules. Uh, basically, only Qt is is worth to note. The other ones are are set as deprecated. Okay. Now. Uh, some word about the um, command line interface. Um, if you just uh, type Taurus, Taurus help, uh, let's see here. If you type Taurus help, you will see this. Uh, if you um, here you, you see the, the common options. So the options to the, to the Taurus command. Uh, but then there are also subcommands. So for example, if we go for Taurus form, you can also use help here. And you see the options for the, um, for the form command. So, I am pointing at this. This is pretty standard thing, but I found that many people get confused. So if I want to use, for example, an option on log level, let's say, and then I want to use a subcommand and pass an, an option here, let's say, for example, uh, changing the window name to something. I, I, have, I have to do it just like, like I did. Okay, this is the, this is the Taurus form, which is empty because I didn't add anything. Uh, but as you see here in my, in my command, uh, I need to pass the help, uh, sorry, the, the, the option of the Taurus command to the Taurus command and the option of the form to the form command. Okay, this form subcommand. Uh, as I said, this is pretty standard, but I found that mm, some people was confused by, by this. Um, these subcommands uh, of, of, the, of the Taurus command, if you are a, an old Taurus user, you may remember that before we had dedicated commands like uh, Taurus plot, we, we would call it Taurus plot or, or Taurus form. This is no longer the case since quite some time. And instead we, we use these subcommands. These subcommands can be uh, added by, um, by different pro different uh, modules uh, via plugins, as, as I mentioned here in the in the plugins section before. Okay, so basically, adding a new uh, adding a new Taurus subcommand uh, is as easy as adding a command in in the setup pi um, in in the setup in in the setup pi of of the module. So instead, basically, instead of using, uh, it's, it's like adding using console scripts entry point, the, the standard one in setup tools, but instead of using the console scripts uh, key, you use the Taurus CLI subcommands key. But otherwise, you just point to the, to the function that, that shows the command. And you should implement this using the click module. So uh, I encourage uh, maintainers of, of 
external modules related to Taurus to provide this kind of, of subcommands. Actually, Taurus self-registers all of its commands. So if we go in Taurus, <coughs> oh sorry, if we go in Taurus to its setup pi, we will see that it its own uh, subcommands are also registered uh, registered here. Okay, and if we go to Taurus, for example, Taurus PyQt graph, uh, Taurus, no, sorry. Uh, if we go to Taurus PyQt graph in the setup pi, we see that it is somewhere, it is declaring the entry points and among the entry points, it is declaring uh, this command. And also uh, is also using this, okay? This is probably in main, yes, this is an old one. I was, oh no, sorry. So I am not, well, I saw something that was not too clear to me, but doesn't matter. Okay. So that's about the Taurus command line interface. Uh, just for you to, I. M many people is not aware of all the different commands. So, you know, it's as easy as doing Taurus help and seeing um, what is uh, currently supported in, in your system. Okay. And just use Taurus, uh, just, just use the help on, the, on each of the commands to, to get more information. Okay. So, Moving to user and system settings. I wanted to highlight this because it is a new thing. Uh, if you have been using Taurus for long, uh, you probably have suffered the fact that when you wanted to change something in the Taurus custom settings module, Taurus custom settings module being um, sorry. Taurus custom settings module being this module in, in, in which uh, different options were set for, for Taurus. Uh, if you wanted to change something from here, you basically needed to have uh, right access to the installation, to the Taurus installation directory, which was not always uh, the case for a Taurus user. So um, since uh, Taurus 4, 8 or 5, I am not sure, uh, this has changed. And now you can, um, you can change the configuration, the configuration used in, in, this, in this module by providing um, a configuration file uh, with any with any format, so something like this, and you just this uh, stays. If you are in Windows, sorry, if you are on, on on Linux, for example, it will be in Taurus XDG Taurus Taurus Ini. That is for the for the system wide settings. And in your home directory dot config Taurus Taurusini for for the user configuration and equivalent uh, locations for for Windows. So if you put a file called like this with this uh, with this syntax, you will be able to uh, modify the the settings in Taurus. 
Uh, that's what I wanted to say. Ah, and of course, uh, there is also this interesting part that you can also that you can also use the settings uh, argument, the settings option, and pass your own settings file for for the execute for the execution that you want. This is from the command line interface. Okay, now <clears throat> I wanted to do a quick review of the generic widgets that we have. Uh, I wanted to put uh, screenshots here, but I didn't have time. I may do this uh, at some later point or someone else may, may do it. Um, so basically I will go very fast on this. Uh, this is just, the only thing I wanted was to um, point to some uh, widgets that may not be known by everybody and which could be interesting. Um, so as a hint, uh, you can uh, launch Taurus demo and this, with this you will have already access to many of these widgets. Uh, if you haven't, if you have never seen Taurus demo, uh, it is this thing. So let's say if you want to see a label in action, this is a label and here you can configure uh, things like, for example, changing the foreground role to known or actually better changing the background role to known. Uh, sorry, to known. Things like this. So this is just a, a, a place to, to check different uh, different widgets that you may not be aware of. Not, not all of them, it is not comprehensive, but some of them are here. And another way of checking many widgets is running Taurus GUI example 01. Uh, because, well, some, some widgets are being used there. Uh, it takes some time to start. This is it. Okay, here you can see, for example, a form in action and leads and, and checkboxes. Well, everything, Taurus, Taurus launcher buttons, things like this. Okay. So uh, very quick, uh, which widgets I think you should know? Is Taurus form, uh, probably you already know. Taurus attribute form is a Taurus form that gets a device. Instead of getting attribute names, it gets a device and shows all the attributes from that device. And Taurus command form is a, um, a widget that shows um, the commands for a Tango device. This is Tango specific. Uh, then Taurus device panel, uh, which combines these two, and Taurus model chooser, which is the typical widget that you get when you, for example, launch Taurus form without any models. This is, this is what we call the Taurus model chooser, is where you can browse the um, the Tango database, for example, and, and put things. And then you can, uh, you, you have the list that you are then applying to the, to the form. Okay. Then as basic da data display, I, I'm, I'm going to show, oh, sorry. No. no. Uh, running the example. Uh, for the um, uh, basic data display, you all probably know Taurus label, Taurus LED, and probably not Taurus LCD, uh, but doesn't matter. Uh, so let's say, for example, uh, let's change. Um, oh, no, I cannot do it from here. Wait a second. 
I unlock the view and I create a new pers a new form. Uh, so I just created an, an empty form here because I cannot edit the one that the one that came with the GUI that I can now put a few things here and I can alter them. So let's say for the amplitude, um, if I change the read widget, for example, to the Taurus, let me see. Uh, Taurus LCD. I don't know if this will work. Yes, it did work. Okay, so you can see it here. Okay. Um, so as I said, this is basic data display. The LED would be this thing uh, that can be on and off. And the label, uh, you probably already know it. Uh, then about user input, um, there is the checkbox like, uh, sorry. There is the checkbox, there is the value line edit, which is this one here. There is the wheel edit, which is something that you can get is this widget here. Oh, this is demo effect, of course. Okay. Uh, what else do we have here? Um, the graphical choice widget is basically what you get when, for example, when you are this, this one. It's a, it's a widget that can be reused, that we are using it now here for showing uh, for presenting a panel uh, of uh, icons for, for choosing. Um, more data plotting. So we have, uh, this is a Taurus trend. You also know the Taurus plot. Uh, Taurus plot demo. Okay. Here it is. So this is using Taurus PyQt graph. Uh, the, the old timers will remember that we, we, al we also had the QWT implementation for this, but the QWT implementation is no longer working on, on Taurus 5 because Taurus 5 doesn't support Python 2 or Qt4. So the, it is PyQt graph now. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, well, we have the, um, the 2D plotting, like for example, let's say, um, I think I put here, yeah, like for example, an, an spectrogram. So it's a 2D, a 2D trend. Uh, probably I should have, let's see, uh, yeah, it's a bit slow. Let's, if I do help, I have here, no, if I do, hmm. How is this call is, oh, I don't remember it, no, polling period. I am just increasing the polling period to, to show it uh, better. Um, uh, 
yeah, so this is a 2D spectrogram where you can uh, also see the, um, the profiles and everything. Okay, so this, uh, these are the 2D uh, data plotting. Also, you can plot images like, for example, this. Okay, you can zoom everything. Uh, and synoptics. Um, synoptics, here is uh, an example. Uh, let's see where, where it is here. Oh, example zero one here. This is a synoptic using, oops, sorry. Let me move it here. So this is a synoptic that can be used, for example, for navigating in a GUI. Uh, this is using the built-in synoptic, the built-in synoptic in Taurus. Uh, that uses uh, GDRO, uh, uses the, the same synoptic tool as in, as in Tango, uh, the, the, the default one, and is mostly compatible. It's not 100% compatible, but it's mostly compatible with uh, GDRO uh, definitions. Uh, but it is uh, sort of uh, limited and quite often people ask for, for a better um, alternative. And we think that the plugin from Max4 called SVG Synoptics is pretty good for this. So you can see it here. Uh, you have all the, here how you can, you can call it. I think I actually have a, I have one that I was doing. Uh, yes, Synoptic demo. Whoa, 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 okay. Yeah, so, so this is, this is a synoptic uh, with, it uses, it, it uses layers and can be zoomed. So it, it has some interesting, interesting things that, that can be, well, that, that may make it a better alternative than, than the built-in uh, synoptic. But this of course depends. If, if you already, if you are already used to, to use GDraw in Tango, then probably this is your easiest, your easiest uh, approach. Instead, if you uh, prefer to use uh, a standard, um, uh, SVG edition tool, like for example, Inkscape, then probably this is a better, a better option. Um, now, uh, now for something completely different. Uh, let me see. Yeah. Um, one, one thing that uh, this is probably not so much for the maintainers, but for the developers, but I wanted to, to mention is uh, how you can develop in Taurus using different levels of, of abstraction. Uh, the higher level, so the, the one that makes things easier is to use the Taurus GUI framework. Uh, I just put here the links to, to this, just, just go in there and and, and check. Um, this is this explains how uh, you would create a GUI using this framework. Uh, and also, I think this link is pretty interesting and is maybe it's a bit hidden in the documentation because because it is in the API API description for the Taurus GUI class. But here are some examples. When, when you look at the Taurus GUI class, there are some examples of how you can use uh, Taur the, this class in different ways. You can use it uh, in a purely declarative way. So basically having um, a file uh, that describes things 
uh, .py file that describes things, or you can use it purely programmatically, like you would use another class. Here you are just um, instantiating the class and then um, and then creating a panel programmatically and everything, or you can even mix the two uh, like it is here. So this is probably kind of a advanced use of Taurus GUI, but I wanted to point it because I think many people is not aware of, of, this, of these possibilities. Okay, uh, then of course you can use the Taurus designer. And the one thing I wanted to mention here is to caution against compiling the UI files using PyUIC. The problem when doing this is that this file uh, 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 gets, may get tied to the version of the PyUIC that you were using. Uh, so with the Qt version that you had installed when you compiled it. So if you compile the, the UI files and uh, then update your Qt version, uh, they, may not, they may not work well. So for this reason, we um, recommend to always dynamically load uh, the, the UI files. The performance hit, mm, we, haven't, we haven't seen any, any serious performance hit by, by doing it like this. Uh, this here is an example of how this can be done. Uh, it is in the best practices. Unfortunately, the anchors, uh, the links with anchors are not working. So it is pointing to the beginning of the document, but this is what I meant by loading uh, the UI file dynamically. Basically just uh, get the path for the, for the file that you want and then use UIC load UI, like here. You can import UIC from Taurus external Qt or directly from PyQt5 or whatever. Okay. Um, and then just pointing to this documentation where uh, this is uh, uh, also explained how, how you can create a, a widget, for example. Okay. As I said, I am providing, I am going very fast here and I am providing a lot of information, but hopefully everything is linked uh, correctly in here and you can come back at any moment and explore it uh, much better. Okay, another feature that I wanted to highlight uh, is uh, the fact that uh, in a Taurus form, you can uh, customize which widgets are used uh, by default when you uh, when when you add a model to the form? So let's see. For example, how I, if if I do a Taurus form here, mm, let's see with, for example, an eval. Uh, model and then maybe with CSTG test one ampli, for example. Oh, ah, sorry, uh, there is a. Uh, yep. So this this is a Taurus form I I just created. And you see that I passed two models to it. Sorry. I passed two models to it. And for each model, I get one line in the Taurus form. This one line is handled by a widget called Taurus value, uh, which is the default that, that is used for, for attributes and also for, also for, um, for devices, uh, let's let's see this about the device, which may also be interesting. 
if I also add a device here. What we get is um, a button that shows the device in a device panel. This takes a bit because uh, the Tango test has a lot of attributes, as you can see here. Okay. So, as you see, for each uh, line, uh, for it, for each sorry, for each uh, model that I passed, I get a line, and this line is handled by by this uh, widget, which is called Taurus Value, which is very flexible and allows to even uh, as you just saw before, you can change uh, the, uh, the internal sub widgets of, of a Taurus value. Okay, like for example, as I did here, um, you see now a spin box instead. Okay, like this. Uh, not, not a very good example because of the of how it expands, but anyway. So this is a still a Taurus value. It's just a customized Taurus value, but it is a Taurus value. But uh, for example, uh, as you know, uh, Sardana um, provides uh, widgets for controlling motors. So that is the, the motor, which is a device, instead of being shown as this device, gets shown uh, let's go and, and look for a motor um, like, yes, this motor, for example. So this, again, is a, is a device. If you look at it, it is, it is a device. Uh, but when, when I apply, I don't get the same widget that I am getting here. This is because Sardana is registering its own factory for widgets. And when, uh, when a model is a model supported by Sardana, because of this registered uh, form factory by Sardana, uh, you get an special, uh, an special widget here. If you want to know which, um, which factories are currently registered uh, by in, in a Taurus form? You can do it with this. Okay, if we go to help, you see that you have the list available item factories. And Right now we are only we only have one factory registered, and also you can use the included including factory and excluding factory uh, settings to enable or disable uh, factories. You can read all about this in the uh, in not here I, I will in Taurus form part, but anyway, if you come. Here, this is the, again, this is the plugins page and you can see all this uh, information here. Probably if you click on this, yes, you, you get information about how to set uh, the factories programmatically and everything. Okay, so this is what I wanted to show. So for example, if you have um, um, a new scheme or, or some, some specific Tango device uh, that you want mm, to be, that, that you want that the form shows it uh, using a specific widget, you can always register a form item factory. Okay, let me see. I think I am stopping here because what comes now is uh, quite dense. So let's do the break now, if you agree, and, and we continue from here.